Hello everyone, it's January 29th, 2013, it's Tuesday, it's Herp Tuesday! I'm sorry I didn't get an episode out last week, but it ended up being quite a busy week and wanted to make sure I did a good job with this because this week I thought I would do a look at Anne van Schotter's A Bird Came Flying, which is from this, this book of five of her solos that she published a little over a year ago. And a little less than a year ago, I, I actually did a music video of it um, as part of a YouTube competition that she was doing last year. It's a, it's a lovely piece. It's a, it's a really nice collection of music because it's not too hard. The notes aren't too hard. And you could play you can play them on either the lever or pedal harp. But there's a lot you can do in terms of phrasing. You know, her writing is fairly minimalist. And that often can leave room to, to, to really, you're not worried about playing a whole bunch of notes and, and, and the speed or the fingering or, or just trying to struggling to, to get the piece under control. There's not necessarily, a, you get the, these lots of space to play around with where you want to put each note. And that's really what music is about, right? Is about putting each note in that perfect spot in, in space and time. So I thought I would I would go through this and talk a little bit about it. Um, actually just started recording this and and uh, had this top F break on me so which probably cut a pretty good reaction on video but I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that. Um, but let's let's get started here and, and the piece starts with this, we'll sort of hear the same structure throughout the piece. It's almost kind of a theme and variation style. So we hear this. And, and, and we're kind of hear that several times. And, and so right from the start, it's important to think about what it is we're doing with it because you, you could just play that as sort of, you know, a metronome churning out the notes. But that's not really what, to me at least, what it wants. And it's kind of, I think I've probably used this before, but it, it's, it's kind of like when we talk, we don't have a word followed by another word, followed by another word. These words that we're saying are all part of a bigger structure, a, a sentence and then, a, and then a phrase and an idea that we're trying to get across. So the same thing in music, it's not just a note followed by another note followed by another note we have to have this sense of this long phrase that's happening so that we can think, um, the first step would be thinking of, of all those notes as belonging together, as of being one structure, one block, one phrase. But actually, we can extend that to the next one. And, In fact, ideally, what you want to have that sense of feeling is from the very, from the first note of the piece to the end, it's all one phrase that, 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 you know, we have some rise, we have some fall, we have some breaks, but, but that it's all connected, right? It's all, and every, this little bit here has to be connected to this little bit over here. So trying to think about, think about that broader shape and then thinking about what we're doing to to make it interesting and make it musical. So for me, what I want to hear um, I'm probably maybe gonna linger a little bit on this first note, especially since it's the first note of the piece. Um, and, and towards the end of that I'm maybe going to try to stretch it a little bit so we and I want this sort of sense of um, that 
we grow and, and, and then it, it relaxes a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's like breathing, right? We, we breathe in and we breathe out and, and we get that. So that there's a little bit, a little bit of a crescendo, a little bit of a decrescendo, a little bit of a rise and fall in intensity. And of course, one of the things, you know, we want to be able to have that control, right? To to control the volume. And, and of course, making sure that each note is present and even, and if we're, if we're stretching it, that that's what we want to do and, and all that stuff. But, but that, that control and that sense of it is, is a bigger piece and having it, having it breathe. And so then the second time we repeat that phrase, I want to hear it a little bit softer because we've just heard it a little bit of an echo effect. And again, I think I've talked about this before that I don't like big, obvious echo effects to me that, that, that often is just too uninteresting. It's too predictable, but I definitely want to feel this back off a little bit. So I'm going to play these first two phrases again. So somehow making that second time feel not, oh, I just heard this before, but, oh, this is, this is leading us on. This is something new, even though we've just heard the exact same notes before. And then uh, it's, it's sort of a fresh, to me, a fresh start is we get and, and again, not too much on all these, but that little sense of breath of of, of rising and then falling in intensity. So, and there I might sit on, on those notes because we're, we've suddenly, we've just, we've been in A minor throughout the piece. Um, oh, well, actually I'm in A flat minor. Uh, I know that at one point Anne posted that of course, you can play, I think, all of these um, or in, in the, um, well, not all of them, I guess, but all, like the ones in C, for example, or in G, you can just put all the pedals up one notch and play them in C flat or G flat on the pedal harp. And, and in general, right on the pedal harp, the more flats there are, the better sound you have because the strings are longer, so they get to produce a little bit fuller, richer sound. So anyway, I'm playing this in C flat rather than C, but we've had a flat minor or a minor if you're in C throughout this first section and now suddenly oh we got this E minor so trying to sort of uh, stretch those a little bit to, again, we don't want to be too obvious, but kind of saying, oh, here's something different, you know. Oh, something different. And, and then we get, and, and this is marked mezzo forte again. Um, and yeah, I like having this next section be somewhat strong. And again, building, like I think throughout a lot of this, there is that kind of sense of breath. And again, I want to stress that if it gets too much, I, I, I don't like that. If, it, if it's always like quiet, quiet, loud, quiet. But if, if, it's, if it's subtle, I, I think it calls for that little, that little rise and fall in intensity. So we get And again, at the end, I may be just giving a little bit of extra weight, a little bit of extra time to those notes because we're going to come back to this original phrase. Let me, let me try that again. And, 
again. Trying to get that, those notes in the perfect spot, right? Because we finished this, we're gonna come back to, to what we've heard. So it's kind of an end. You can think, or at least I think, a little bit of a fermata there. And so it's that little bit of a retard, that little bit of slowing down and trying to place that A in that perfect spot after the F so that it comes, it's not boom, 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 right? We're slowing down, but it's also not too predictably slowing down. Uh, what do we get? Um, Um, that 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 we want to kind of have it just it's slowing down but oh it maybe comes in uh, just a, a fraction earlier than we might expect um, so that not you know we're, we're not milking that too much but we're definitely giving it a little bit extra time because we're, we're slowing down and, and, and kind of ending this phrase. Anyway, just some things to think about. Then we come back to... And again, she's got that marked mezzo piano and I like that. I like thinking of that sort of as the beginning, but maybe a little bit less because we, we've had this sort of intense middle section and now just relaxing a little bit with... And even a little bit less. And not not too, you know, not again, not too much of a retard there. Um, we're kind of ending this phrase, but we've done a little bit of that before. We just want to let it fade away. And that and that and then we're finished of this first statement. So there's the first page, the sort of the statement of the of the theme, of the structure of the piece. And then we get the second page. Um, and it's to me, to me, it's kind of um, this this variation or the, the second page. I hear it as kind of being broken up into parts a little bit more than everything else, uh, because after that, yeah, the the the, I guess I'll call them variations, um, are all of a piece. Whereas this, to me, is a little bit more, this is kind of free, and we have sections within the variation. So, um, let's start with, uh, I'm just going to play it straight for a moment. And then I think she wants a little break there. Um, so there it is, straight. Now it's marked poetically, rubato, and, and and I think there's a number of ways you could go with this. And what I, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not. Sometimes, right, you'll play a piece or you'll play part of a piece, and you'll say, yes, this is exactly how I want to play it. And other times, you'll play and think, yeah, I like this, but I think there are some other options. Um, and I, I, I'm not completely convinced. So here, I, I like the way I play this. I'm not completely convinced that it's it's always the way I'll play it. But um, what, what, how I'm playing it now, anyway, is is feeling it. Um, oh, sorry. getting kind of wild um, and we're in this first statement right we always had that kind of breath of whereas this the intensity is building it's getting faster getting wilder um, so that we get this the, the first bar is is maybe matching up with before but by this as we start the second bar we're trying to it's starting to become faster and, and oh this is something different now um so 
yeah, that, that that's that's how I'm feeling it right now. Um, and of course, again, that's that's the neat thing about a piece of music like this where it's minimalist. There's not all these notes going on, and, and, and so you can play around. How exactly do I want to use these few notes? How do I want to put them? Um, and, and right at the end there, uh, apparently that last E is supposed to be in the left hand, and it's part of the end of that phrase of... And not a pick up to the next bar. So just a, just a misprint that happened in the, in, the, in the music. Though I think it works either way. Um, so, yeah, then we get this. And then we're back to sort of, you know, we, we back down, we back down a little bit, and then... So this... I kind of want the same feeling as the start of this page, the start of this variation, but not to the extreme. Because in the uh, when we start this, when we start the whole page... We're building to this. Which is fairly fierce and, and, and loud um, and, and wild. Whereas when we start the second part, second half of the page, we're calming down a little bit so that we get that same sense of same sense of building, but not quite as much. And then we're backing down, and I I don't hear this glist as being some sort of wild gliss it's it's still we're, we're calming down a little bit so uh, let's start that again uh, whatever those notes are but um so yeah definitely calming down a little bit with that gliss um I've been playing the the bottom note that A with with two on my left hand just so that we hear it and it's a little easier than trying to stop right on it and it's a little more distinctive. I don't know if that's necessary, but I kind of like that. Maybe not quite as much as that. And then again just on that last chord, you can play around with how much of a break you want to do, right? I did a fairly deliberate break, which is nice, but... You could do something a little faster. Um, you could back off more if you want. Um, again, all these opportunities to play around with exactly what you want to do. So there's that. Then we get to the next um, next page. And and again, there's there's some words from this poem on, on these different, uh, I guess, again, I'll call them variations, uh, which maybe also inspire you in terms of how you want to play that particular variation. So here we get these, this little whispering. Right hand. And I think you have some freedom here in terms of how fast you want that to go. So... You know, I, I like it fairly fast, not... Uh, I still, I still want it. I still want to be hearing each and every note, right? Whereas, it, for me, you know, there's a certain point when, if I'm trying to play it too fast, it, it starts to get not quite as even as I would like. Um, but I think, you know, if if you sit down and play it and find that you're not able to play it that fast, that's fine. You can.
as, as long as these are really even, you're in good shape. And the note to watch out for is, is the note with two, that C. And so you can practice it exaggerating that. Because not only is it kind of in a weak position in terms of right in the middle of the finger, so I think a little easier for it to get lost, but it's also in the weak position in terms of the rhythm that we hear one and the and, but the E, you know, the, the or if we're counting, let's say we're counting uh, eighth notes, we hear one, 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 and two, and three, and four, and one, you know, one, two, we hear those beats, but it's the ands that are, are most at risk to get lost. So making sure that, that those stay clear and that everything stays really even. Um, and again, when I started, I'm probably trying to ease into a little bit and in a way that makes it clear what is happening because we have this harmonic sound and some notes up here and it's easy for it to sort of get lost and take a little while before our, our ear and our brain catch up and say, oh, this is what's happening. So, oh, sorry. So maybe just lingering on that first note a little bit and the second note just to try to make it clear. And again, you're backing off that, that sense of breath, backing off a little bit um, at the end of each of these phrases. No, again, again, not to any extreme, but just subtle. And, uh, where do we get down? Sorry. Uh, sorry about that, whatever it is. Um, and, and again, I think this whole variation, there shouldn't be too much rise or fall. It's all just kind of whispering um, and staying fairly level. So we're just enjoying this. Uh, sorry. So while other ones have maybe this more dramatic sense to them, other variations, and of stretching and pushing and pulling, this one I think is, is, is very peaceful. Um, still an in intensity, right? Still an in intensity, but um, it's just that shimmering, kind of shimmering effect and, and the harmonics. And you'll notice that on that, this A, I ended up taking it on the left hand with a, what would be a right hand position, right? Normally with the left hand, we're using this uh, base of the palm to catch the harmonic, which gets a, a really nice sound. But as you get up higher on these strings, it can be slightly riskier and it can end up being easier to, to do it this way, which of course requires some practice. Um, I'm actually working on the Ravel introduction in Allegro right now, and there's an A, I think it's even an A natural, which is a little harder, that I'm taking in the left hand like that. So I've been practicing that, but um, just something to be aware of that you can switch positions and it does make it a little bit easier on these high left hand harmonics, um, though it will probably require some practice just to get the left hand accustomed to this idea of, of playing with the finger rather than the um, base of the palm. So then we move to the this next variation, which is two pages. And we have all these arpeggios, which is kind of fun. And just like any arpeggios, you can practice this. Every finger is there, uh, 
it's all coming right in this case one right after another you can do the you know uh, short long But um, just trying to get that as even as possible. And now she's got some pressure marks on the on the top here. And again, I would try to be somewhat subtle on those. I wouldn't do. For me, I tend to, uh, I don't know, I tend to dislike um, a, a huge accent, e even though sometimes it can be pretty effective. But on, on the whole, I'd rather have less than more in terms of an accent. Um, you know, that's just me, I, but I would... Since they're pressure marks, which generally means a little bit less, but just bring that out, right? But trying to bring it out in a way that it's not boom in your face each time that it's that it that it stands out, but it's 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 just part. It's still part of this lovely boom 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 note after note arpeggios. Um, and and again, this is very much like the original statement of the theme in terms of in terms of breathing. <laughs> of the because there's a chance that they get lost so again maybe a little bit more of an accent on those ones um, and then we come back down again and, and maybe thinking uh, a little bit of a breath mark a little bit of a comma between those two um, so that it doesn't become, again, we're just going up and down on this A minor and you want to create um, a, a, a real sense of, of phrasing and of something new happening, even though it's the same chord so that we get. And we're gonna just do that this same arpeggio again but somehow maybe giving a little bit extra space just to show oh, we're, we're actually we're starting a new phrase. Uh, sorry. Uh, and backing down a little bit too, just just so that we when we have these two. again thinking about what I talked about before about the, we're slowing down and trying to figure out where where we're exactly we're placing those last notes and again it's not the end of the piece we don't want to do too much oh, but we definitely want to do something and just trying to try to get that mm, yum in the in that exact right spot uh, so let's do lot of time you got a lot of time where oof, it's been kind of intense this whole arpeggio stuff and now this is the last page of the piece um, and definitely think 
take all the time you want there to 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 then come into this and I think this last page is maybe my favorite um, we get this nice <laughs> different uh, chord progression than we've had before a and this really is an opportunity to to just stretch a little bit to to to, to um, place these and the left hand real sense of freedom of of it being kind of timeless that we're just floating we have all the time in the world there um, and just playing around with that again so that it's not right I mean that that's just one note after another but isn't it so much more interesting when it's where it's important to hear this is a longer phrase it's not just a note 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 that still we're still hearing that 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 silence that that or that space where nothing's being played is still it's leading us into these next notes not too much of a stretch between those notes uh, and again as I say I like to often to think about it as trying to you're stretching right it's, it's not as if you're just boom 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 one note after another but then once you are giving a little bit of extra space trying to put that note just a little bit earlier than you might expect so it's that little bit of boom it, it poof, happens uh, is a bit of a surprise we and, and we say oh ha, he, 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 there it is you know I wasn't quite expecting it there and, and that can sometimes be really really nice um, so so we get that and again still thinking of the fact that this phrase is going on that that's leading us into and I like a fairly deliberate break so that we're it's not we're not we're not confused about what we're hearing we're hearing each of these and again this grace note being fairly deliberate hesitating just a, a little bit uh, holding back a little bit before doing that because here's this oh you know here here's this little echo effect happy with with the ending um, uh, again it's, it's kind of a situation where in that first variation where I like what I'm doing but I'm not convinced that it's the uh, the perfect way to do it um, and so again the thing to do in a situation like that is to play around with it in various ways and and, and record it and listen back and think is this how you want to do it um, so, so uh, some other options.
might be like a little faster break, a little less. Uh, I, I don't know. I do. I do think that we have to do a fair amount of of slowing down there. It's the end of the piece. Um, we want to make it somewhat clear that it is the end of the piece. Um, Yeah, that's nice. I mean, anyway, so just, but, but as I said, um, I'm not, I'm not completely convinced that, uh, that uh, I, I'm not completely happy with, with the ending, but, um, uh, again, I think you want to, you want to make sure that it's clear that the, the ending is happening and, uh, I wouldn't, at the same time, I wouldn't do too much. Um, <laughs> That's, that, 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 that doesn't work. So... Yeah, I think that, that, that's, that's fairly nice. That's, that's not bad. Um, and I'm taking that last note in the right hand just because uh, typically, of course, the right hand is going to have a little bit more control than the left hand. And... I just want to try to make sure that that note is as perfect as is possible. Um, and two is going to have generally a little bit nicer sound than the thumb. So rather than... And see, so that time I, I would have wanted it just a slight bit louder and I just feel it's safer to play that with two on the right hand. Um, anyway, just, a, just an option. Well, what have we got here? Yikes, 37 minutes. Um, hopefully this was educational and entertaining. And uh, yeah, so I, I definitely recommend this this book. Uh, I, I like the other pieces in there as well. I'll have some links to where you can order it and where you can hear some of the other music. Uh, and did a lovely music video for I Feel Different. And I think um, there's a, you can listen to, I, I performed it at a concert some point I think that audio is up somewhere as well so I'll have those links up and as I said it's a it's an effective effective writing it's not too difficult and playable on both lever and pedal harp so hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in a couple weeks time cheers <laughs>